What I miss about China, with all the politics, you are fake news, right? And all the negativity, I felt like it would be a good idea to talk about some of the things that I do miss about China, because I definitely do, without a doubt. It's hard to spend so much time in a country and to not like certain things, right? And the number one thing is the face of China. And I know it's kind of controversial. China is very beautiful on the surface, right? You have these buildings with amazing lights and you have malls with waterfalls. And I understand that a lot of times it's only like the surface, right? Perhaps behind that waterfall is like a dirty, grungy window. I understand that, but you know what? Sometimes it is nice to walk around the city to see some really nice, well done shrubs. <laughs> it is nice at night to walk down the street and uh, look up at the city skyline and to, you know, see a bunch of lights. And while I understand that, it's also kind of a city thing, right? It's not necessarily just a China thing. China does it really well, actually. I remember looking out my window and living close to Canton Tower, right? And there's this like giant tower changing colors. And it does this all the time. It does this all year round, right? It's not like they just do this for a holiday. Now, in America, sure, you know, we, we, uh, we shoot fireworks, we uh, have our buildings change colors and do all that stuff. Um, but China, like, in the city, like, they do that shit all year round, man. I remember there was, like, this huge donut building, and there were times where I would just drive. I'd just get on the highway and drive, or even just call an Uber to go somewhere that I knew would drive me around the city, just so I could, uh, you know, see the, see the lights, see the buildings and things, because... Face in China is a huge thing. And man, uh, even if you've lived in, in Chicago uh, or New York or LA, whenever you get to China, you'll see that the face of a city in China is amazing. It really is, and that's, that's just the honest truth. The second thing is gonna be like the food and drinks. Now, I know you're thinking, of course this fat guy likes food, but hear me out for a second. You know, Chinese food is very different from Western food. It's just very, very different. And if you've never had anything like it before, when you first get to China, you're gonna see a lot of stuff that may not look very appealing. But you know, if you try a lot of it and you give a lot of it a chance, you'll learn really quickly that maybe looks can be deceiving. Maybe that sometimes what Westerners have been taught to perceive as you know, a good looking food or a bad looking food could be incorrect. A lot of Chinese foods that look horrible except for chou dofu, like that stuff's horrible, I'm sorry. But a lot of uh, foods that, that look bad aren't necessarily bad, you know? Um, it's like that fish with the eye and it's been fried in the oil and you're like, oh, that looks bad. Not really, like give it a try, you know? You might find that you actually like a lot of that stuff. And the other thing besides just the food, and I'm kind of putting this in one circle here, is the drinks. Now, milk tea in China, um, when I first went to China, the very first milk tea place that I ever had was a milk tea place called Coco. And Coco is like, eh, it's a cheaper milk tea place. And it's kind of like they make the milk tea as quickly as possible. And, uh, you know, it was okay. But I learned that like in China for milk tea, there is some damn good milk tea and just drinks, at least in Guangzhou, and perhaps perhaps this is a, a Guangzhou thing too, but I think it's a lot of China, and that is like these fruit drinks, because in Guangzhou it's hot, you know? So these fruit, these fruity tea drinks are amazing, and these, these stands are just everywhere, right? Like you can walk 10 feet out your door usually and have a milk tea place or a fruit tea stand place, and uh, just to experience the, the differences between uh, America and China, right? In America, you know, you can pretty much buy a Coca-Cola anywhere, right? And that's great. 
but sometimes a Coca-Cola just doesn't cut it, you know? You've got to have that watermelon tea or, or, or something like that, you know what I mean? And uh, you've just got to have that. And, and China, man, that's something that China does really well, and that's drinks. You can get uh, all these different flavors of drinks, and uh, it really is good. The, the diversity of drinks that they have there is, is incredible. And uh, hopefully that's something that we get more of in America, you know, besides just uh, Coca-Cola uh, at places. So yeah, that's, that's one thing I really missed about uh, and really continue to miss about China. The number three thing that I miss about China is the cashless society. And this is really debatable with people. A lot of people are like, no, screw that. I don't want a cashless society. Because Americans really look at the freedom of a cashless society, right? But a cashless society is a, is a convenient society in many ways. And I had this conversation with uh, an Australian person and uh, they talked about using Apple Pay. And uh, I agree, you know, like we, we have Apple Pay uh, here in America. Apparently it's in Australia and works. Um, but it's just not as convenient as something like WeChat, right? Because everyone in China has WeChat. Like your 87-year-old grandma has WeChat. Uh, a little 11-year-old kid has WeChat. Every store takes WeChat. Every vendor takes WeChat. You got a cat, it takes WeChat, you know? Uh, you can just use WeChat universally everywhere in the country. Uh, every vendor has it. And that's something that is so convenient. I always tell people the same story. When, when I came back to America one time and I tried to, oh, we seen, and then I realized that I was in America. I was like, damn, I gotta pull out my debit card. I gotta, and I gotta type in these numbers and swipe a card. Whereas if in China, you just hold up your phone and they're like, boop, and then you're done. You walk away, right? You literally have to say nothing. And, uh, you know, it's just super convenient, especially for little tiny transactions. I've heard a lot of people say, well, I don't wanna put a dollar 25 on my debit card. Well, you know, in China, you could you could spend little to nothing uh, with WeChat, and uh, you know, hey, it, it's uh, it's just a great system. It really is. It's an amazing system. I wish that America could get on this, uh, and it's, it is not going to happen. But I wish America could get on this this universal, accepted everywhere. Um, type system. But I, again, Americans are worried about the freedoms and they're so worried about the security. And that being said, me personally, I never had a security risk with paying with WeChat in China. So, um, is it secure? Uh, hmm, I don't know. I, I suppose so. I never personally had issues. So I'm going to say, yeah, in, in my opinion, it's probably pretty secure. Number four, without a doubt, is shipping. Holy shipping in China. China's shipping is amazing. It really is. Like for me right now, I swear to you, like on my mother's grave, this is true. I ordered a package on Amazon and I have been waiting for a week on this stupid thing. And it's through Amazon. And right now the issues with the postal service in America is it's insanity, right? You know, when I was a child, I would get down on my hands and knees every night and I would pray, please, dear God, when I get older, please let there be two day free shipping. And so it was supposed to be delivered yesterday and it wasn't. And then today it was like, it should be delivered today by eight. And uh, it's 9 p.m. right now when I'm making this video and it still hasn't been delivered. And right now we're going on to a holiday so I ain't gonna see that thing for a few days, okay? Um, and then I'll tell you the story about when I was in China, I ordered a router and I hadn't been in China very long, okay? I had got on Jindong, JD.com, you know, and uh, I ordered this router beep, 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 and I paid with my cashless WeChat 
you know, use my thumbprint. And uh, I take my, uh, my, fat, my fat butt and I get in the shower and I'm like doing my thing and I'm like <laughs> And then all of a sudden I hear a, a knock on the door and someone yell my address and I'm like Who the hell is that? And keep in mind This is like two hours later two hours if that maybe like an hour and 40 minutes and like this guy is like beating on my door and I'm like who is that so of course I like throw on my clothes you know throw on a shirt and a towel real quick which is like half half a towel you know I'm so fat you know I go to the door and I'm like hello but, but, but of course I you know I spoke Chinese I'm like hello you know and he's like Jing Dong you know can you can you sign I'm like okay and so I assumed, I assumed that uh, my wife had purchased something and I was signing for that. I opened it up real quick and it was my router. And I was like, don't you like popsicles? What? I said, don't you like popsicles? What? I said, don't you like popsicles? Yeah. Like I ordered this an hour and 40 minutes ago, probably. And uh, it was already delivered. So uh, delivery in China has no bounds, right? If they can deliver that thing now, they're gonna deliver it now. They're not gonna wait until the next day. They'll deliver it like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night even. You know, it's it's just, uh, it's really incredible. I really hope that uh, Amazon can, can get on that level, you know, um, because uh, shipping in, in America <laughs> compared to China is like, China's just like, They've, they have uh, hit pieced us, if uh, you know you want to put it that way, right? Uh, they've definitely got us beat with shipping. Number five to keep it alive is the people. Okay, and I don't mean all the people, like the IEs. I mean the amount of people. You know, in, in China, they have that saying, people mountain people see, right? And what that means is, is there's a lot of people. And... To be honest with you, again, this is a, a love-hate relationship because it's a lot of fun, man. When you when you go to a place and there's a lot of people there and the place is popping and people are having fun and people are walking around, it feels good, man, to know that you're a part of that, that uh, something fun is happening, that something is going on. And that can be on a Wednesday night in a city like Guangzhou because the population is just so large that you can go see uh, a basic light show or just go to a popular restaurant and uh, you can have a lot of fun any night of the week, right? Whereas if in, in say Chicago or New York or LA, like you can go to some places on a Tuesday and like there ain't nobody there. And you're like, where's all the people? This place is usually popping on a Friday night or a Saturday night. Well, it's just not, right? So a lot of times um, when you go to do things, it's a lot of fun. It really is because there's a lot of people and there's a lot of people that are just enjoying themselves and having a good time. And sometimes is it, right? So even though I don't miss it all the time per se, it's definitely something that I do miss about China and that is the people, the crowds, and uh, just the idea that if I know I'm going out on a Saturday night, I can go somewhere where there's like 50,000 people. So that's one thing I do really miss about China. Trains, I'm gonna talk about some trains. And this is kind of another love-hate relationship here. I'm gonna be honest, the trains in China, all the good things that people say are pretty much true. They really are. The trains are fast, the trains are, are uh, clean, the trains are, are uh, seemingly well built. Um, they're comfortable. Um, I wouldn't say the staff on them are rude. They have Wi-Fi. They have plug-ins. Uh, trains in China are great. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed riding the high-speed trains. And I think that the, the, the high-speed trains, and when I speak of trains, yeah, I'm talking about high-speed trains. Uh, I do think they're great. I do think that uh, they're good for city to city travel, and I mean closer city to city travel. I'm not gonna be one of those people that tells you, oh yeah, I'm gonna take a 15 hour train ride 
over a five hour flight uh, because I'm not. I'm going to just put up with the five hour flight, okay? The trains aren't that damn nice, okay? But um, they're not perfect either, right? Just like the crowds. It's not perfect. Um, because you do have to put up with some of the people on the trains, the crying babies. Uh, you know, that does happen. The loud speaking old people, right? But the, the, the main train circle, the main train thing, I do, I do miss it. I do wish in America that we had, um, you know, between our cities, say Chicago, St. Louis, Houston, uh, that you could take a high speed train. I think it would be it would be nice, you know, to travel between closer cities. Um, because I used to go between Guangzhou and Shenzhen in like 30 minutes. And if you bought your ticket on your cashless WeChat society, you know, and then you went to the train station, um, I mean, you could pretty much hop on the train within less than an hour and it would take you uh, 35 minutes to get there and um, you know hell you could you could go between Guangzhou and Shenzhen uh, two cities and you could do it in, in like an hour you know it, it was incredible uh, and only 30 minutes of that would be on the train going between between the two cities so yeah no I, I, I think those are definitely the five things that that I miss about China those are the five things that I think that uh, I wish we could do in America, do better. And um, those are five things that I, I also think that are sort of a city thing, but uh, may mostly apply to China because I feel like a lot of things that people say about China are just city things. Um, you know, so yeah, those are the five things I miss about China. I hope you guys liked this type of video, a different video. Um, I want to talk about some different topics on this channel too. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Patreon page. I love you all, and thank you for watching.